Chapter 14 of The Seventh Most Important Thing by Shelley Pearsall. Arthur's first week back at school was about as successful as his first day of probation had been. Going from juvie to school was like going from one extreme to the other. In juvie, you learn to avoid everyone else. If some convict kid wanted to cut in front of you in the food line or steal your banana pudding at supper, you let him. No questions asked. When Arthur got back to school in December, everybody avoided him. He felt as if he were inside an invisible box. Nobody bumped into him in the hallway. Nobody spoke to him. When he sat down in the cafeteria for lunch, the other kids picked up their trays and left. The whole school knew what he'd done, of course. Nothing was a secret at Bird Junior High. You couldn't fart without somebody knowing. On Arthur's first day back, the vice principal, who everybody called Vice, although his name was Mr. Barber, met him at the front door after he got off the bus. He always reminded Arthur of a dry cornstalk. Tall guy, gray wisps of hair on his head, grim colored suits. Follow me, Vice said, gripping Arthur firmly by one shoulder and steering him down an almost deserted hallway. We've moved you. Arthur wasn't sure what moved meant until Vice showed him his new locker in the gym hallway. It was at the opposite end of the school from the other seventh graders' lockers. It didn't take a genius to figure out. They decided to put him there to keep him away from everybody else. Plus, the coaches' offices were nearby. Arthur figured the coaches had probably been told to keep an eye on him and tackle him or something if he did anything violent. For some reason, the thought of the balding, overweight football coaches trying to tackle him made Arthur smile. What's so funny? Vice asked. Nothing, Arthur replied quickly. This one's yours. Vice opened the metal locker, 1034, which smelled like foot odor. Okay, Arthur said, glancing inside, although there was nothing to see except a crumpled O. Henry candy bar wrapper in the bottom. Vice closed the locker again with a clang. So this is where you'll be for a while, until we see how things are going. With good behavior, you might be able to earn your way back to the 7th grade hallway someday. From the doubtful tone of Vice's voice, Arthur guessed that no matter how good he was, someday was probably never going to come. Later in the week, Arthur had a big quiz in his earth science class. He thought he understood the material pretty well. He knew about volcanoes and earthquakes and how continental drift is the best, is the way the continents move. He remembered some of the facts he'd learned before juvie, how we're all living on big plates that are floating around, nothing is permanent, and how some people are unlucky enough to live in places where the plates already have big cracks in them. Arthur was convinced he was one of those people. Despite the gloom and doom, he liked earth science. It was one of the few classes he looked forward to. Industrial arts was another one, maybe because the teacher reminded him a little of his dad, and he never gave out any homework. But Arthur had missed an entire set of volcano questions on the quiz. Without even trying to be funny, he had to admit to himself that he'd completely blown it. The earth science teacher was a short man from India who everybody called Mr. C because his full name had about 20 letters in it. As he handed the quiz back to Arthur, he shook his head sadly and tapped a dark finger on the missed questions. You must follow directions next time, he said. Follow directions. Arthur wondered if the guy knew Officer Billy. During his first miserable week back at junior high, when he was failing stuff and forgetting stuff and going to his foot odor locker in the gym hall, Arthur often thought about giving up and quitting. His dad had dropped out of school in the 11th grade. Can you drop out of school in 7th grade? He wondered. And why bother to learn all this crap anyway? What's the use? What does it matter? But whenever he thought about quitting, he'd hear Judge Warner say, The apple doesn't fall far from the tree, and it would make him mad enough to stay.